Have you ever wondered how to humanize your AI content and get the outputs to sound just like you? Well guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can clone yourself in either ChatGPT or Claude so you can get humanized outputs that sound like you versus the traditional AI gibberish. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Ryan with AI Insider Tips, and my goal here is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. So if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that. And now let's get back to this tutorial of how you can humanize your AI content. So I actually made a video on this exact same topic about three months ago titled How to Humanize AI Content and Bypass Detectors. Now, a couple reasons why I'm redoing this. Number one, AI has changed a lot three months ago, right? There's new models with Claude, ChatGPT, and there's just much more enhancements now with AI today than there was three months ago. And number two, in that tutorial, I showed how to use this custom GPT called AI Humanizer. And this is a very high quality custom GPT, but the issue is the more I thought about it is the number one goal of this custom GPT is to just bypass AI content detectors. So right here, whether it's copy leaks, writer.com, zero GPT, there's several of these AI content detectors. And what this AI Humanizer was great at is generating content, re-spinning it. So it just bypassed these detectors, but the issue is if you actually read through some of the content that it was re-spinning, grammar was off, there were some misspellings, but it bypassed the detectors. And so at the end of the day, guys, what I can take away from this is that just because you're bypassing AI content detectors doesn't mean that that's necessarily quality content or content that you would ever want to publish anywhere online. And even Google has stated now that they reward high quality content however it's produced, meaning that if you have high quality AI generated content, you still have the potential to rank. Now, obviously you're doing some sort of manipulation tactics. If you're bulk creating AI content that's not very high quality, you're gonna get penalized and that's for obvious reasons. But at the end of the day, Google has stated, I'll say this again, they do not penalize high quality content however it is produced and that includes AI. I'll leave a, I'll leave a link to this and everything else that I mentioned in the video description below so you guys can look at this. So what is the best way to humanize AI content? Well, I'm gonna show you three different ways on how I do it. So number one is using a custom GPT that mimics your writing style. As you'll see here, I have an AI agent with my name and you do have to be a member of ChatGPT Plus to access custom GPTs. It still costs $20 a month. And what I'll show you, I'll give you guys a secret sauce into how I created this. If I click edit GPT, this is what I mean by humanizing your AI content. You're giving it all sorts of instructions, you're giving it knowledge, and you can even come in here and copy and paste transcriptions of any videos that you've talked on, podcasts, or just anything out there on the internet that mimics your writing style or your voice, you can train this custom GPT on. So if I come back to configure here, you'll see I have a PDF version of my LinkedIn profile. So my LinkedIn profile was 100% written by me. I did not use AI to generate any content on there. So I'm feeding it all the data on my LinkedIn profile that has my writing style uh, and also just my experience and other details about me. I also have a bio that I wrote for myself, right? So this is on AIinsiderTips.com. Just as much content that you've written by yourself, you can upload on the back end of a custom GPT and start training it. Now, I would also suggest the following. So you'll see here, I have tons of bullet points for all these different instructions. And not all of this is necessary. I don't know why it just zoomed in like that on me randomly. Um, and not all of this, guys, is necessary. But the important part is to exclude words that ChatGPT and other AI models use all the time. So you'll see as I highlight right here, I gave it the instruction, do not use the following words or phrases in your output. Delve, tapestry, vibrant, landscape, realm, embark, excels. Uh, integral, pivotal, moreover, arguably, notably, dive into, intriguing, holistic, sail into the future, heard that one before, ethical considerations, I'm sure you guys have seen that one, realm, uh, in essence, et cetera, et cetera, right? So there's probably more words that I could add to this, but that is a huge takeaway that I wanna show you in this video to better humanize your AI content is to remove all of these words that we see in outputs from ChatGPT and Claude. You can also add other details here as well. Um, but for the time being, that is just the most basic thing. It's just number one, creating a custom GPT that mimics your writing style. So then over here, I can kind of test it. I can say, help me write a LinkedIn post when I provide the topic. So I'm gonna say, um, how to humanize AI content. 
And the gist is I can start creating content on my social media posts like LinkedIn uh, to get content that better sounds like me that's not generated from AI. Uh, how to humanize AI content. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can obviously tweak this to however you want, but theoretically, as you continue tweaking this and tweaking this, and you can make changes in the instructions and you can upload more knowledge, this should start to sound like you more and more. It's not going to be perfect the first time, right? You just have to come in here, keep adding data, uh, keep tweaking it, keep giving it custom instructions. And over time, that is that will help you humanize your AI content. Now, the second way to humanize AI content, and I actually prefer this over using a custom GPT, is using what's called a Claude project. This is Claude's version of custom GPTs, and I have made several tutorials on how to set this up and other details. I'll leave a link to all those videos in the description below if you're brand new to this. But the reason that I like using Claude for something like this to humanize AI content is you'll notice here on the right hand side, there's just a much more friendly user interface and customization of knowledge that you can add. They call it project knowledge. So you'll see right here, I've added all sorts of things, right? My LinkedIn profile again, my bio, all my podcast transcriptions. So I've been on several podcasts and I'll copy and paste those transcriptions, dumping into my knowledge of my Claude project. So continually learns how I sound, how I speak to better tailor the outputs that sound like me. Uh, AI speaking engagement. So I've, speak in pub I've spoken publicly about AI topics. I took those transcriptions, um, things that I've written myself, right? More YouTube transcripts. And again, I came in here to the custom instructions, very similar to what I did on the custom GPT, talked about the writing tone, gave it all those words to avoid in the outputs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So then in here, you can just simply ask it whatever prompt you want, right? So um, help me write three... LinkedIn posts on the topic of how to humanize AI content. Um, make sure to sound like me as instructed. I'll just do that. And then let's see what it comes up with here and I'll skip ahead after this is complete. All right, so here's what Claude came up with in the outputs. And I actually ran this through one of the AI content detectors and it says 97% human generated content. Now, what's interesting is if I go in here and copy and paste the exact same thing that I had ChatGPT do in my custom GPT and then paste it in here, I believe it flagged it as mostly AI generated content. So I'm going to click analyze. Yeah, 75% human generated content. So this flagged more AI content from ChatGPT than it did from Claude. When I have the exact same knowledge, the exact same custom instructions, there's just different language models producing the outputs. So you have GPT-40 on the custom GPT, and you have Claude 3.5 Sonnet producing outputs on Claude. So that's just a really quick example, but that in essence is why I like using Claude projects to better humanize my AI content versus a custom GPT. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention is that Claude Pro does cost $20 a month, similar to ChatGPT Plus. And in order to access these projects on Claude, you do have to be a paying subscriber of Claude Pro. I know it's unfortunate, but guys, if you're in the weeds of AI like I am and you want to produce the best content as possible, I would highly recommend either investing $20 a month in Claude Pro or $20 a month in ChatGPT Plus. Trust me, you'll thank me later over time. So the final way to better humanize your AI content is using this tool called Cuppa. Now Cuppa is an all-in-one AI tool that I believe costs about $13 a month. Yeah, $150 a year. So only $13 a month, which is very inexpensive. You can get a four-day free trial. I have a link below. You guys can find that in the description or pinned comment. And what I love so much about is the all-in-one AI all -in -one, one, you have full customization over your API keys. OpenAI, Anthropic, right? Where if you're on ChatGPT Plus or Claude Pro, you only have access to that tool's outputs, right? So if I'm on Claude, I can't get ChatGPT. And if I'm on ChatGPT, I can't get Claude. I'd have to pay for both of them. And the benefit of using Cuppa, if I come into the dashboard here, is you have what's called a custom preset. So you'll see right here, I built one for AI Insider Tips, where I can essentially start creating content at scale that sounds exactly like how I write at AIinsiderTips.com. So if I come in here and I click edit, I'm going to do a full review on this tool in the near future. So I'm not going to get into the weeds of everything yet. Um, but similar to the instructions inside a custom GPT or a Claude project, you'll see what I'm doing here. Tone of voice, point of view, uh, giving it a description, giving it some other settings here, what to, what to do, what not to do. Uh, there's 
are some advanced options that I have yet to explore yet. And this is where you start really getting into the humanization part, uh, giving it keywords, content prompts, uh, extra introductions, title prompts, uh, content manipulation. This is probably one of the best features of Cuppa. Uh, you can actually go in here and write any word that you don't want to have in your output and replace it with the following. So again, I'll do a video at some point on words to avoid with AI probably, um, but this is just a great feature that Cuppa offers. They do images, other knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, guys, I'm going to do a full review in the near future, but that is the third and final way to better humanize your AI content is through this tool called Cuppa. So that's it guys, those are my preferred ways to humanize AI content in 2024 and beyond using a custom GPT, a Claude project, and also using this AI tool called Cuppa. Now again, this is Ryan with AI Insider Tips. I appreciate you if you've made it this far. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, dislike it if you didn't find value, but most importantly guys, I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you have better ways to humanize AI content? Are there other tools out there that I'm forgetting about? Are there custom GPTs? I uh, really appreciate you all being here and I hope you all have a great day.